This video explains how to set user rights and privileges. Only administrators or super users can change a user's rights and privileges. Go to the System tab and then the Users menu and the Manage Users submenu. This will show the grid of existing user profiles. Choose a user profile by double clicking on the user ID in the grid. To set the user rights, go to the Settings tab at the top of the screen. The setting groupings related to the user rights and privileges appear after the first six groupings. Single click on a setting title to display all the options within that group. Each setting is fully documented. If you click on the setting name, it will show you documentation on what the setting means as well as what each option means. Whenever you change a setting, you must remember to click the Update button to save your change. The User Functional Rights group is a way to control if a user has access to the main tabs or functions along the top menu system. For example, Orders refers to the Orders tab, CRM refers to the Customer CRM tab, etc. If a user does not have access to a tab, they will not see any menu system along the left side once they click on the tab. The Order Rights group is a way to control what a user can do within the order system, assuming they have access to the Orders tab. For example, they may be able to create an order, but not plan or dispatch an order. The Customer Rights group is a way to control what a user can do within the customer system, assuming they have access to the Customers or CRM tab. For example, they may be able to create a new customer profile, but not maintain the customer billing rules. The Asset Rights group is a way to control what a user can do with the assets, assuming they have access to the Assets tab. Assets include vehicles, drivers, trailers, and owners. For example, they may be able to create a new driver profile, but not maintain the driver accounting information. The Carrier Rights group is a way to control what a user can do within the preferred carriers within the Assets tab. For example, they may be able to set a carrier as preferred, but not maintain the carrier accounting information. Finally, the Networks group is a way to control what a user can do within the Networks tab, for example, they may be able to send broadcast emails to the network, but not define the sharing rules with other network carriers. It is possible that your company has multiple business units, for example, a trucking division and a brokerage division. If you have multiple business units defined in the TMS, then when setting up a new user, you define which business unit the user is associated to. You must then define on a user-by-user -user basis if the rights and privileges the user has within their defined business unit will extend to the other business units. To do this, go to the user profile and select business units from the top menu. The rules for extending rights and privileges to other business units will be copied from the donor user profile if you create a new user from an existing user or a template. Extended rights means that whatever rights and privileges they have with their defined business unit are extended to the other business units. As an administrator, you should set up template profiles for each of your user types and set the general rights and privileges of each profile and also define how these rights and privileges extend to any other business unit. For example, set up templates for a dispatcher profile, a billing clerk profile, a payables clerk profile, etc. Then when defining new users, you can copy the profile from the predefined templates with all the appropriate rights and privileges across all your business units.